So with Studio One version six, we now have a global video track. Now this is something that I've been wanting for a really long time. I've worked with video and Studio One in the past and I was able to make it work, but what I really wanted was to have exactly this. And this is something that anybody who's working with video, whether you're a film composer or you're doing post-production, you're definitely going to appreciate having this. So first things first, we have a global track now. In our global tracks, it says video. If you're not seeing these icons, it's probably because your track header width is too narrow, in which case you can click this little option over here and you have the ability to open up the global track for video. I'm just gonna resize this so that I can see everything. All right, so I have two files that I wanna import. First of all, I've got a video file. I'm just going to drag this into the video track. Notice that that positioned itself just like it was an audio event or a, a clip of some sort. And next up, I'm gonna import this audio file. We're gonna talk more about this in a little bit. Okay, so in terms of our editing, we do have some basic editing features. I'm not gonna talk about everything. I, I wanna talk about setting this up properly so that it's in sync and set to the proper frame rate for the song you're working with, but definitely do read the release notes in detail because there's a lot of information that will be covered that I won't necessarily speak about here. Now, whenever you're working with video in any DAW, you have a frame rate that you need to take into consideration. And this is something that Studio One will automatically detect. So if I open up my song setup in the general tab, notice we have all these different frame rates that are available. So how do we know which one our video is? Well, it's very simple to click the from video and then Studio One will automatically assign the correct frame rate that's embedded in the video file into your actual Studio One song. I'm going to click apply and okay. Now, furthermore, we also have a preference in advanced video tab where we can set song frame rate to video frame rate when importing a video file. I think this is really useful to just have enabled all the time because then you won't have to do the step that I just did. So open this up, set this up once, click apply and OK, and you're done. Now in this case, I have what's called a time code burn-in on this video file. And this is something that when you start moving up and doing more professional jobs and working with really good editors or working with um, music production houses and things like that, the video file that you will get will most likely have a time code burn-in. Not all the time, but most of the time. And this is handy because it allows us to have a sync point reference at any given point of the video. Because the important thing to note about video content is we're not talking about minutes and seconds. The actual time that you see or the duration of time is based on the time code frame rate. I know that sounds confusing, but just take my word for it and leave it at that. So I'm going to go back to the very beginning of my Studio One song. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that my frame rate in my song matches the frame rate in the video. I'm going to go to my secondary ruler and change this from seconds to frames. And now I'm going to open up my secondary ruler over here and I'm going to change this from seconds to frames. So now you can see we have these different frame reference points and if I was to toggle up one frame at a time, notice that we have right over here and if I'm going to zoom in my timeline so you can see this a little bit better. See this here? 20, 21, 22, 23rd frame. As I move up, I'm just toggling in these different frames. Okay. Ideally, these need to match. So the frame rate that is shown up in, in Studio One needs to match the frames that are embedded in the video. Now there's a really simple way to do this. We can right click and we can set frames at cursor. Now in this case, I have a burn-in, so I know exactly what this is. This is 00, 59, 00, This is how we match our frame rate in Studio One to the embedded burn-in that we have of a video. So now check this out. Now we have 595800. And no matter where I position my cursor, these frame rates are going to match. So if I position this at the very end, you can see 4822, everything matches. Now what happens if you don't know what the frame rate is? Or you don't know what the, it doesn't have a burn in, so you don't know what the exact frame rate that the video starts at. In those cases, I would automatically say that you already know what the video frame rate is because we clicked from video or you have that preference enabled, so you're okay. And the other thing is, I would say that if you don't have a burn-in, there's a good chance that the video editor started their sequence at a time code of 0000, which is what Studio One defaults to. So you're probably fine. The only time you have to worry about this step is when you have this leader that has this burn-in before the actual picture starts. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, this is going to be in sync across the board. I'm gonna close this for a moment and let's talk about a new command that we have available. If we go to event, we also have a command called spot. So in this case, 
I can actually take this event and I can say, I want to spot this to a very specific place. This happens all the time in video. You might get um, a file sent to you and says, hey, here's this file, spot it to this time code on your timeline and it'll be in sync. So in that case, I know exactly where this, this is supposed to be. This is supposed to be at the very beginning of the session. Now I could just click, hold and drag it and move it to the beginning, but I want to show this feature. So we're going to go frames. And now in terms of the start, I'm just going to click here and notice that it automatically moved to the very beginning position and I'm going to click OK. So that was an easy one, like I said, because I literally could have dragged it. But what happens if this was meant to happen all the way down here? If I knew the exact time code and I had that from an email from someone, then with that spot dialog, I could just go ahead and enter that time code and then it would spot it down the timeline at the exact right position. So new feature that we have available using the spot dialog. Okay, now depending on where you live in the world and where you work, you have different potential leaders that you could have. So I'm in Ontario, Canada, uh, just outside of Toronto. And over the hundreds of video projects that I've worked with, 99.9% .9 of them had a two pop. And what that is, is it's a tiny little bit of tone that is exactly one frame in duration based on the frame rate that you're working with, which in our case is 23.98. And it's two second duration at this time code. Like I said, the wall clock, which is minutes and seconds, does not necessarily equal time code. So just keep that in mind. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm happy with where this is. I'm happy with the fact that I have my time code set properly, but I need to know exactly what's happening at bar one. I want the bar one position. This is going to be happening exactly at zero one. So the way that I do this is I actually use this two pop slug that I've created, which I know is an exact duration. And I'm going to do a tutorial in the very near future on how to create these in Studio One. But these are something I created maybe 10 years ago in Pro Tools, and I just use them over and over. And they're labeled with the frame rate. And basically, it just gives me the information. I know it's a two pop, so it's two seconds at this frame rate. I want to use a um, tempo mapping method to align my bar one exactly at the right position. I'm going to open up my tempo track. And with this event, I'm going to head over to where it says tempo and I'm going to click don't follow. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you want to make sure that your snapping is active. Notice that bar two, even though it looked like it was exactly at the time code boundary, it wasn't exactly at the boundary, right? So we have this and I need bar two to be exactly there. So what I'm going to do is with my snap mode set to adaptive and I can click the snap to grid and snap to events. Now, as long as snapping is on and as long as this track is set to don't follow, I can hold down the command key or the control key on a PC and this is gonna snap to this boundary. So now what I've done is I've made sure that bar two is happening exactly at my zero one time code position. Now, another thing that I can do, because I don't want this to start at bar two, I want this to start at bar one, is I can right click and I can choose set bar offset to cursor. Boom. Now we have just aligned our project perfectly. We go back to the beginning. This is 00595800. If I go exactly to bar one, this is happening exactly on the bar boundary and the frame boundary of our first frame of action. So this is exactly what we need it to be. From this point, I could just quite simply open up my browser and let's head over to, we'll use this file over here. I'm going to just drag something in and I'm gonna drag this in just so that it happens exactly at bar one and we'll just drag this in quickly. So now this is snapped to bar one. Also, let's kill the, um, let's clear the tempo so we don't have any time stretching. And now what we end up getting is a perfectly synced video that has a two pop where I can go back to the beginning. So that is how we set everything up. We used a bunch of different commands and we have the ability to slide the video track around and set offsets. This is the meat and potatoes of working with video, understanding time code, understanding that your video file you have has an embedded time code rate, understanding where the editor who exported this video file, what their 
first frame of action was in terms of on their timeline and making sure that everything that you have matches. This trick I just showed you, that's just something I figured out because there's not an easy way to set the bar according to a time code position, but it is very easy if you use these slugs. And like I said, I'm gonna show you how to make these. Now, while we're on this topic, let's unwind this for a moment and I'm going to remove this and also, you know what, let's remove this as well. I'm going to delete this time code position or rather this tempo node and let's set this back to uh, just a static 120. Let's assume for a second that you got this two pop and somebody said, don't worry about it, just start it from like, just start it from the very beginning. Or let's say that I wanted to work in this and I didn't want to have a two pop and because I just wanted to export the, the, the file for them in its entire duration, uh, according to my sequence. I'm going to basically use a couple key commands over here. So let's go back to the beginning. So this is 005958. I'm going to head over to 01 and then we'll click 00. Zero, zero. I'm just using my numeric keypad and the arrows to do this. So now I've snapped this to exactly bar one. If I click the video track and do option or alt X, now I've just snipped this. And if we zoom in, you'll be able to tell that I zoomed this on an exact frame boundary right here. What that means is that this piece over here is no longer needed. I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to move this, just shimmy it back all the way to the beginning. So now this is starting exactly at the beginning. And then in this case, we can right click and we can do our set frames at cursor. And in this case, I'm going to go with, uh, we'll go zero, 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 and we'll click okay. So now this frames is starting at exactly zero, zero. And then in this case, I just want this to be, uh, we will set bar offset to cursor. And now we've set this, so we've just actually removed the two pop. And now at this point, we just do our session as we normally would. We set whatever tempo, we compose the music alongside the picture. But having the ability to do this and having the ability to take this and drag this handle back and say, okay, I want it to be here. And then adjusting everything is really, really important. So that is working with the video track. We have some basic editing features and stuff like that, which I think are important. And also we have the ability to um, extract the sound if we want to. We also have the ability to change the size and we also have the ability to go full screen. But I think for the most part, as long as you get setting up the technical part right, which is now very easy in Studio One Six, it is going to be much more enjoyable to work with the videos and working with sound for picture in this version. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too much and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.